Wow, it's such an important process to the jury. Uh, Trump said at Mar-a-Lago the other day it's, it's going to be somewhat luck. Um, everyone will know who he is. Judge Mershon is going to see if they can uh, be impartial. That's part of the question. I, I guess part of it, walk us through, each side can toss out a certain number that's unlimited if it's biased, but then we go back to Judge Juan Mershon, who's the arbiter of that. How will this uh, factor in? As we know, he has connections and his daughter has connections to huge Democratic uh, uh, fundraising operatives. Right. And his rulings, Bianca, have, have not been in favor for the majority of the time for President Trump. They've been against President Trump. So, yeah, having picked many, many juries. Um, so each side has 10 strikes where they can, in essence, strike someone because they just don't like them. They think they're going to be bad. They don't have to give a reason. They can strike those jurors. And it's only 10. So what's going to happen is it's going to come down to challenges for cause. And that's where you have unlimited challenges. But the judge is going to have to let President Trump's defense attorneys really delve into detailed questions with all these potential jurors. Because what you said, everyone in the world knows who Donald Trump is, and everyone in the world has formed an opinion about him one way or the other. So ultimately, it's whether you can be fair and impartial in this trial. So hopefully, President Trump's defense team will be running currently all the social media posts by all of these people to find out if they posted negative things, because you don't want people on a jury who are going to come in there and lie to get on the jury. And we found that in the past with President Trump's cases, well, but yeah. it's too late. And let me get into sort of another angle before I want to talk a little bit about uh, Israel uh, and the situation over there, which Trump did address at a rally over the weekend, Pennsylvania. You know, this is a novel legal theory, and Bragg spent all that money with a grand jury, but this is much different. Uh, you're just going to have to have some real evidence here. And there's a question of whether or not, A, if this actually is a crime because he elevated a misdemeanor, it's never been tested, or even if the, the way the indictment was written, if it's actually something that he can, you know, convict Trump of. And all you need is one juror to have a little bit of doubt. So as we talk all the time, it's New York that, you know, it sounds like Judge Juan Marchand has not been favorable. Uh, but there definitely is a lot that is a uh, question mark for Bragg here. This is by no means uh, a lock, lock solid uh, case for him in any which way. No, it's not. And as you said, you just need one juror who will follow the law and they can be a holdout, which means it will be a hung jury. Mm. Um, hopefully you'll, you'll have 12 jurors who find that he didn't do anything wrong because he did not. Remember, the Southern District of New York, one of the most liberal districts in the country, refused to take this case. The Justice Department didn't take this case. Yet Alvin Bragg took this case and created 34 felony charges. It was never even a felony to begin with. The only reason he did that was so he could have the statute of limitations because the case had run. The statute of limitations, the time frame in which someone could bring this criminal trial had run. So he had to he had to bootstrap other cases on there. It's really ludicrous. And it was years Why after payments. It, it was years after no payments were made, too. So years. it kind of was in time after Donald Trump announced he was running for the White House. Okay. Uh, really yes. appreciate your thoughtful analysis and very astute analysis there. I want to just play a little bit of Donald Trump over the weekend talking about Israel, who was under attack. We hadn't heard from Joe Biden, but yet here's 45 addressing our nation. Before going any further, I want to say God bless the people of Israel. They're under attack right now. That's that's because we show great weakness. This would not happen. The weakness that we've shown is unbelievable, and it would not have happened if we were in office. You know that. They know that. Everybody knows that. You know, on October 7th, he was also at a rally and addressed that. That was the day which, you know, sparked all of this, Pam. We get a tweet from Biden at around midnight and pictures from uh, the war, the emergency meeting he had after he left Delaware, of course, uh, in the afternoon because yeah. he has to spend some time at his weekend house. Uh, you know, this clearly is a very more dangerous situation under Biden and very different than the way Donald Trump treated Iran. And now we're just really unsure about the widening escalation. Your thoughts? Yeah, it's frightening for our world and, and especially for our country. And Bianca, I was with President Trump last week and he was talking about this. He is a staunch supporter of Israel. None of this would have happened had President Trump been in office. These other countries, they see they see the weakness in, in Joe Biden. And yes, he hides out in Delaware pretty much every weekend because he's not running our country. So yes, they see the weakness and they're going to attack these countries whenever they can, because they know when Donald Trump is back in the White House, they will not be able to do this. Donald Trump has always practiced peace through strength, and that's what he will continue to do for our country when he's president again.